Thank you for buying a Brother sewing machine. This DVD is designed to give you an overview of the machine operation in line with the operation manual. Please note that some descriptions may not apply to the specifications of your model. Let's get the machine ready for use. Insert the foot controller plug into the jack on the right side of the machine. Connect the power supply plug into a wall outlet. Turn the main power switch on. The sewing lamp comes on when the machine is turned on. Now let's take a look at how to set the bobbin winder and the lower thread. Only use the bobbin that has been designed for this sewing machine. Use of bobbins from older models may cause injury or damage to the machine. Pull out the spool pin fully and insert the spool of thread for the bobbins onto the spool pin. Hook the thread on the thread guide groove. Pull the thread from the front to the back around the pretension discs completely. Pass the end of the thread through the hole on the bobbin from the inside of the bobbin and pull through. Put the bobbin onto the bobbin winder shaft and slide the shaft to the right. Turn the bobbin and align the groove of the bobbin with a spring on the bobbin winder shaft. Turn the main power switch on while gently holding the thread from the bobbin. Press the foot controller down lightly. Wind the thread around the bobbin a few times and then stop the machine. Trim the excess thread above the bobbin with a pair of scissors. Make sure you cut the excess thread completely before winding the bobbin. Wind the thread again by pressing the foot controller down fully. When the bobbin is full, the bobbin starts to turn slowly. Take your foot off the foot controller to stop the machine. Cut the thread with a pair of scissors Slide the bobbin winder shaft to the left and remove the bobbin. First, turn the main power switch off before setting the lower thread. Raise the needle by turning the hand wheel toward you and raise the presser foot lever. The position is correct when the mark on the hand wheel points directly up. Remove the bobbin cover by sliding it toward you and put the bobbin in so that the thread comes out from the left side. Hold the end of the thread with your left hand. Push the bobbin down lightly with your right hand and then pass the thread through the slit. Make sure that the thread is correctly inserted through the tension adjusting spring of the bobbin case. For models equipped with a quick set bobbin, push the bobbin down lightly with your right hand and then pass the thread through the slit with your left hand. Pull the thread toward you to cut excess thread. Replace the bobbin cover. Now you have completed the setting of the lower thread. Now let's take a look at how to pass the upper thread of your machine. 
ensure that the main power switch is off and the presser foot lever is raised. Raise the needle by turning the hand wheel toward you. Pull up the spool pin fully and insert the spool of thread for the upper thread so that the end of the thread comes out toward you. Hold the thread from the spool using both hands. Pass the thread to the thread guide groove from the back to the front so that the thread comes out toward you. Hold the thread with your right hand and use your left hand to feed it along the groove guide following the numbers. Make sure you feed the thread through the thread take-up lever from right to left. Hold the thread in your left hand and feed it through the needle holder thread guide with your right hand. Lower the presser foot and thread the needle. While gently holding the end of the thread, raise the presser foot and slowly turn the hand wheel toward you once to raise the needle. the upper thread and the lower thread will come out. Pull out the thread with your fingers. Put the upper thread and the lower thread under the presser foot and pull out about 5 centimeters, 2 inches of thread toward the back of the sewing machine. For models equipped with a needle threader, hook the thread on the needle holder and lower the presser foot. While lowering the needle threader lever slightly, hook the thread onto the guide. Turn the needle threader lever toward the back of the machine and the hook passes through the eye of the needle. Pass the thread through the hook. Holding the thread lightly, turn the needle threader lever toward you slowly and the hook will pull the thread through the needle. Draw the end of the thread from the needle's eye under the presser foot and pull about 5 centimeters or 2 inches of thread toward the rear of the machine. For models equipped with a quick set bobbin, you can begin sewing without pulling up the lower thread. Now let's start sewing. Turn the main power switch on. Set the pattern selection dial to straight stitch sewing. To select stretch stitch pattern, first set the stitch length dial to SS. Select a pattern by turning the pattern selection dial in either direction. Raise the needle and lift the presser foot to set the fabric. Pass the thread under the presser foot. While holding the thread and the fabric with your left hand, turn the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle into the fabric and lower the presser foot lever. When you sew the fabric, adjust the speed with the foot controller. To finish sewing, release your foot from the foot controller to stop the machine and then raise the needle by turning the hand wheel toward you. Raise the presser foot, pull out the fabric and then cut the threads with the thread cutter that is found on the left side of the machine. Let's 
try reverse sewing. To sew the fabric in reverse, lower the needle into the starting point of stitching and lower the presser foot. Start the machine slowly and when you have sewn a few stitches, stop the machine. Press the reverse sewing lever and hold it to sew reverse stitches until you return to the starting point. When you have returned to the starting point, take your finger off the reverse sewing lever and sew forward again. You can reverse sew for reinforcement at the end of sewing as well by stopping the machine and pressing the reverse sewing lever. Let's check the thread tension. The tension of the thread depends on the type of fabric or thread. Try sewing with a piece of the fabric you are going to use and adjust the tension of the thread. Let's use the satin stitch. Turn the pattern selection dial to the satin stitch. Raise the presser foot, set the fabric and start sewing. To adjust the stitch length finely, turn the pattern selection dial subtly. For the models equipped with stitch length dial, turn the pattern selection dial to the zigzag stitch and set the stitch length dial between F through 1 to adjust. Take a look at how to adjust stitch with the models equipped with stitch length dial stitch width dial. You can adjust the stitch length as necessary. To adjust the stitch length, use the stitch length dial. The higher the number, the longer the stitch. The lower the number, the shorter the stitch. You can also adjust the stitch width of stitch patterns. To adjust the stitch width, use the stitch width dial. The higher the number, the wider the stitch. The lower the number, the narrower the stitch. After adjusting the stitch width, slowly turn the hand wheel toward you and check that the needle does not touch the presser foot. Sew a buttonhole. First, use tailor's chalk to mark the position and length of the buttonhole on the fabric. To sew the buttonhole, change the foot to the buttonhole foot A. To replace the presser foot, raise the needle by turning the hand wheel toward you and turn the main power switch off. Raise the presser foot lever. Raise the lever at the back of the holder to remove the presser foot. To attach the buttonhole foot, place the buttonhole foot at the position where the ditch of the presser holder can catch the metal pin of the buttonhole foot.
Push the frame back until it stops and lower the presser foot. Turn the main power switch on. Set the pattern selection dial to AC. Pass the upper thread into the hole of the presser foot. Align the red mark on the presser foot with the front side of the marking on the fabric and lower the presser foot lever. While lightly holding the upper thread with your left hand, turn the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle into the fabric. Press the foot controller down lightly and sew five or six stitches. Stop the machine and raise the needle by turning the hand wheel toward you. Set the pattern selection dial to B and sew up to the marking. Stop the machine at the mark and raise the needle. Set the pattern selection dial to AC and sew 5 or 6 stitches. Stop the machine and raise the needle. Set the pattern selection dial to D and start the machine again to sew up to the marking. Stop the machine and raise the needle. This is how to sew buttonhole pattern type 1 step. Attach the buttonhole foot, placing a button on it. Turn the main power switch on. Set the stitch length dial to F through 1.5. Set the thread tension dial to 3 through 5. Set the pattern selection dial to 1. Pass the upper thread into the hole of the presser foot. Align the red mark on the presser foot with the front side of the marking on the fabric and lower the presser foot lever. Pull down the buttonhole lever as far as possible. Push the lever back. While lightly holding the upper thread with your left hand, turn the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle into the fabric and start sewing. Cut the thread slightly longer. Pull through the upper thread to the reverse side and tie a knot to prevent from fraying. Let's take a look at how to sew buttons. To sew a button, you need to use the button sewing foot M and the darning plate. First, measure the distance between the buttonholes. Take a look at the table on the operation manual and set the pattern selection dial to the zigzag stitch. For the models equipped with a stitch width dial, set the pattern selection dial to the zigzag stitch. And set the stitch width dial to the length of the buttonhole. Turn the main power switch off and attach the button sewing foot. Attach the darning plate so that the fabric does not move forward. To attach the darning plate, align the hole of the needle plate with the tab of the darning plate.
Turn the main power switch on. Set a button between the button sewing foot and the fabric. Check the hole length by turning the hand wheel toward you. Sort the machine and sew the fabric. To prevent the threads from loosening, bring the upper thread into the back of the fabric and tie it with the lower thread. Now let's take a look at the zipper insertion method. For zipper insertion, use zipper foot I. Select straight stitch, center needle position on the pattern selection dial. For the models equipped with a stitch width dial, select straight stitch. And set the stitch width dial to the center needle position. To sew the right side of a zipper, set the presser foot on the left side pin. Let's take a look at how to change the needle and maintenance. Make sure to turn the main power switch off before you change the needle. Raise the needle to its highest position by turning the hand wheel toward you. Remove the presser foot and lower the presser foot lever. Hold the needle with your left hand. Loosen the needle clamp screw with the accessory screwdriver in your right hand. And remove the needle. With the flat side of the new needle toward the rear of the machine, insert the needle until it touches the needle stopper. Hold the needle with your left hand and secure the needle clamp screw with the screwdriver. Make sure you switch the machine off before you clean it. With the presser foot, the needle and the presser foot holder removed. Remove the clamp screws and the needle plate. Grasp the bobbin case and pull it out. Use cleaning brushes or vacuum cleaners to remove any dust from the race and its surrounding area. Return the bobbin case to its original position. Make sure that the projection of the bobbin case and the tension adjusting spring of the race are aligned. Please enjoy sewing with your brother machine.